Hey, what's up you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I'm doing a little bit of a review slash demo of the Cobalt 18 inch bar 80 volt electric chainsaw. Now I'm just a normal weekend warrior DIYer, but I was ready to step up from my sawzall, my Makita sawzall with a limb cutting blade to an actual chainsaw. And I like the idea of not having to mix gas or just put up with a, a traditional chainsaw and go get a steel or one of the other brands. So I gave this a chance. They have made a lot of progress over the years in terms of just the length of the bar and the overall power and supposedly the amount of cuts it can do. So I got a little bit of a challenge. I am well into a project right now of taking down a 20 inch diameter ash tree that died on the side of my house. Pretty much got everything done except for this big guy behind me. Now I need to section this up into no more than three foot sections just because that's where I drop it off at the Landscape Recycling Center. That is our criteria. It cannot be more than three foot if it is 10 inches or diameter or more. So if you guys are dropping off at a similar local landscape recycling center or distribution center where they'll let you take landscape waste, make sure you know their rules. Usually once you get past like a three inch diameter branch, they might have certain lengths or sections that you have to cut it into. So I have sharpened the blade, I have fully charged the battery, and I need to make four cuts on that monster behind me. Now this demo is for entertainment purposes only and it is not a demo on a proper how to properly use a chainsaw. So take your own safety in your hands, wear the proper PPE, make sure you're comfortable with the blade because this is something you want to respect because it can hurt you in a hurry if you don't know what you're doing. So let's see if I can with a fully charged battery, sharpened blade, if we can get through four cuts on this big log behind me. So it looks like we got into the fourth and I am getting an overloaded alarm. So this usually seems like it happens from probably the heat generated by the battery, but also we could, we might be out of battery. There's not too hot. Yeah, the battery showing me nothing in terms of charge. I'm going to give it a second here, try to restart and see how much further we can get with the cut, but something tells me that is the full charge of the battery. Uh, these are huge cuts for this saw, but we are only in our fourth cut, right? So I don't know. I'm kind of the jury's mixed here in terms of what I would expect from a saw like this. Uh, but let's see. Let's see if it can start back up. Yeah, so we got probably about 10 seconds more. And I'm going to need to go recharge the battery to finish off this cut. Okay, so before we go out and finish up that last cut, I just want to show you what you're getting if you purchase the, co the Cobalt 80 volt saw. So you get obviously the unit itself. You'll have a bar guard here, uh, which is always good for storage. And then they sometimes will sell the unit just as the saw itself, no battery. So be careful. If you see a smoking deal and you're going to go buy it, but you need a battery, pause, make sure the battery comes with it. So here's the battery. It does have a, a gauge on it to tell you how much charge it has. Now, I will say with just three bars, that does go pretty fast once you start getting down to two uh, and then one. And then here is your monster charger. Um, if you 
overheat it. So if you go through a scenario like we just did, this one's fully charged now, but if you overheat it, it does actually have to go through a cool down cycle first before it will start charging the battery. So what I have seen is to get it from dead to fully charged, you're looking at about an hour to an hour 15. Uh, so that's for your reference. Now to get up and running and to maintain your saw, you're gonna need a few more things. I would recommend just picking up when you get the saw, uh, the bar and chain lube or oil. I would recommend at least one file so you can keep your chain sharp. And I don't have it with me, but a uh, saw wrench. And what that would be used for is it's not uncommon for your chain to jump off. So here's the two tightening nuts and then there is a flathead screw here which will adjust the, the tension on your chain. So that is gonna, take this off, that is gonna adjust how much tension you have on the chain. So if you get the chainsaw wrench, it has built in what you need to loosen these up, what you need to, to tighten or loosen that, and then to cinch it back down. So it's just convenient to have with you. I can't find mine right now. So look down in the description of this video. I will include obviously a link to the saw itself, and then also the oil, the file, and the, the chainsaw wrench for your reference. So. We now have more charge, so let's jump back out and finish that cut. All right, so we did the four cuts and now I have to take the load to the recycling center, landscape recycling center. But I'll give you my um, thoughts here on the overall saw. So again, I'm not an expert. I'm not comparing this saw to the comparable uh, two stroke or four stroke gas versions. Uh, I'll just try, tell you my use cases. So I have obviously my home and some rental properties. Every year I have some type of pruning uh, limbs, things I need to take down. And then uh, probably every other year I have a tree such as the one that I took down here, which was more like a 35 foot, you saw the 20 inch diameter base, a large tree where I actually had to get a man basket um, and kind of pick it apart from the top down so it doesn't hit the house. And also, again, I don't have the skills to, to drop a tree accurately and not hit a house. So. Uh, overall, it worked well. To, to take that tree down, I used that. I used also a sawzall for just small little branches. And I only had to charge it twice throughout that project. Where the saw, I'd say, probably starts to fall off compared to equivalent gas version is when you do those larger cuts like you saw me do on that, you know, 10 inch diameter logs up to 20. Um, where it only lasted a full battery charge. It charged all night. It only lasted for three cuts. And that was logs ranging from about 15 inches in diameter up to 20 inches. And it did about three and a half cuts. So you got to plan out your projects. I, I do recommend the saw. I think it works. I think it works well. I think it's easier to maintain uh, than equivalent gas version. So I do recommend it. It's $300. It was a good investment for me. The tree that I dropped here, it was quoted out $1,800 to get that dropped and hauled off. Um, I rented a man lift, basically bought the saw, and then I'll have some, some disposal fee at the Landscape Recycling Center, and I'm all in at about $550. So obviously I'm spending my time, but uh, overall I can easily invest in a saw like this. So, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you guys have different experience and maybe you didn't get the overloading like I was getting. Now that overloading warning, I think was basically just the battery uh, being dead. So I don't know if that was actually an overloading or just saying, hey, I'm basically drained out of battery. So if you have any other comments or you have experiences, put it down the, the the comments section. That's the best place where as this uh, video gets more views, you guys will 
see other people's experience and kind of crowdsources the knowledge. So if you're in the market for a saw, that's a good place to go check and see what other people are saying. So before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We have over a hundred videos out there where we put out simple repair and improvement videos around the house and we're cranking out one to two new ones a, a week. So subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.